Um, we began rehearsals and um, we had six visually impaired actors, two of whom had had very little experience prior to the rehearsals beginning and four of whom were professionals. And what that created um, in this very ex sort of extended rehearsal time that we had was an incredible amount of tension um, within the rehearsal process because the time we had the extra time um, in order to um, deal with all the extra access that we were going to build into the production that was going to be live um, um, a live delivery from the stage to the audience given by the actors um, but in actual fact that extra time that we had in rehearsal was spent on training the um, less experienced actors um, to bring them up to basically you know um, a performance level that you know didn't look s too glaringly um, obvious beside the professionals and that in itself just created a, a lot of um, difficult um, difficult um, responses from in, from everybody. Um, we brought Ollie, um, who became one of the actors in the second version of Resistance. We brought him into the rehearsal process in the first version, um, really to run some training workshops, um, because I, f I was basically running training alongside rehearsals, um, and it was it became very time consuming, so we, we brought him in as well. So that was one of the first things that really struck me as a, it was like, it's, it's me, you know. Mm. I recognise you and, and that has changed my experience of this day because I've actually seen that like you're there and you're alive. Um, but it's me, it's me, yeah. you know, because yeah. otherwise the experience is meaningless for Jack as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and in the past, in the past, you would have just gone, Jack, and he would know exactly who you are. Yeah. But the fact that you, you called him, and he said there's no recognition, you know. Yeah. We, in a sense, set that situation up through our lack of experience and naivety, and that, you know, really, looking back, we shouldn't have created that situation, um, without certainly um, you know, letting the more professional actors know that that was what they were going to be coming into um, and having such a long rehearsal time where um, all sorts of um, dynamics were allowed to sort of build up um, and uh, yes, yeah, so we, we kind of learnt quite a lot I think um, about that but, when, but also looking back as well it, it's very hard to, to know what we could have done, really. I think we did the best that we could in the circumstances. And in some ways, if we had known that putting all these elements together would have created the kinds of problems, we, we wouldn't, we maybe wouldn't have done it. And so we wouldn't have been, had the opportunity to be in the thick of it and somehow have to get through the other side, which is what we did. And there are a lot of things about the production that, I know I'm really proud of and uh, and you know I think that we if we had given up before we began we certainly wouldn't have learned a lot of things that have very have been very very valuable. Actors in rehearsal carry out an exercise where they move very slowly. Maria sits next to Peter Brook. Actors in a circle chase each other as part of an exercise. Eileen, the director, speaks to actors. Peter Brook talks to the actors and shakes their hands. Always at the forefront was access. Maria was very involved in the project, a very hands-on producer. And because she was blind, she was able to act as the kind of access director. Okay, this is Tower One. Okay, this is the uh, smaller of the towers in terms of its, its width. Um, is it, there going to be gaps in it? Like there is yes, there are gaps in there. It's literally a lot of interlocking scaffolding. Federique, Catherine, Simone, Ren, yes, and John. 
I pay in this production um, or in the rehearsal process, I paid far more attention to the actual staging of the piece quite early on than I would normally do. Normally I would begin with the heart of the piece, the relationship between characters. We wanted to um, road test some of the access that we were putting into the production. Um, we didn't want to get to the point where we had set everything up and it made sense to us. We took it out on the road and it wasn't really um, connecting with our visually impaired audience. So we had um, partially sighted and blind people come in on two occasions through rehearsals, one in the middle, one towards the end, um, to see what we were doing, to feedback, and then we would take on their feedback and then incorporate some of their ideas and things into what you know the rehearsal process. And then we showed them towards the end of the rehearsals what we had done. Um, some of the lighting that we were going to use was tested out on them and, uh, and then we had a little tiny bit of time at the end of the rehearsals to make any further adjustments. So it's a, it a really very crucial, very enjoyable as well um, kind of inclusion, I think, in the whole process. What do you think was physically happening on stage with the actors? I'm not sure because they were they were, they were static for quite uh, mm -hmm. for most of it. Weren't, I mean, there was one there, one there, and one there. So, it... did you was it enough to know that they were going up a hill, or did you want did you feel like you wanted the um, that described? Obviously, you know, sometimes the access group would make comments on the acting, the quality of the acting, because that for them was as much access as knowing where somebody was on the stage, and. You know, that was slightly difficult because we were aware about some of the quality of the acting and were trying to work on that, um, but we're also aware that it was an access issue as well. Because um, when John spoke for the first time, I thought, oh, God, I know, when did you come on? Right, right. That's, that's what I mean. Um, and I was also thinking that in terms of accessibility... So all the description that would normally be given to people by headphones blind and visually impaired audience members via headphones was incorporated live into the production in very subtle ways for example the use of character names so you know who's walked on stage and who is addressing who you wouldn't normally have in a play um, the sound was incredibly important um, the sound acted almost as a soundscape helping place where the actors were on stage where the music was coming from uh, the time in history backing up all the words that were being spoken um, the language itself, because Maria is blind herself, was written in a very descriptive manner. Um, so again, the access was incorporated. You knew what they were doing, and you know, for example, they're climbing to the top of the hill rather than just hearing some actors climb. It was described as they climbed. Climbing through shell and brush along the side of the hill, above the same. 